All right. Um, so on uh, April 27th, we had a, a pretty good day, um, visually anyway, around around Southern Ontario. And um, and uh, I posted on uh, on the Facebook site, uh, page that the METAR report for the day, which provided some uh, some observations about the nature of the of the conditions that were recorded at uh, our uh, local airport here, uh, Waterloo Region International Airport, affectionately known as CYKF. And uh, and if, and then uh, there was a little bit of chatter uh, about you know what the interpretation of the METAR was. The um, and so I thought about um, you know maybe doing a little bit of a presentation on METARs and what uh, what they what they what they mean. Um, hey Mark, can you give me a little instruction here um, about? Uh, so what are you seeing on your screen? Yeah, we're seeing the your uh, the clouds and the April twenty seventh. That's just that screenshot. Oh, awesome. Okay, okay. So that's the day. So that's the day. Uh, it's a picture of the, of the situation from my office, and uh, it's uh, it looks it was looking pretty amazing. So I had an inclination that I should get to uh, uh, get on Medar and just check it out. Um, find out what exactly what was go going on up up, up aloft. Um, and I've just got a little time tag here, April 27th, uh, 2020 at 2 p.m. local time. So um, the METAR is a, uh, is, a, is a weather report um, that I get that anybody can get. If you simply go to Google on your phone or your laptop and just do a search for METAR YKF or your local airport. If you're in uh, Hamilton, it's uh, YHM. If you're around Toronto, it's uh, YYZ for the for Pearson, or or you could call up Billy Bishop Airport. All of the local airports generate these reports, um, and uh, the source of that report is uh, is the uh, flight planning guide at uh, Nav Canada. So. Uh, you don't have to know that, but that's where it's coming from. And this is generally what it looks like. So I know the first time I saw this, uh, you know, I thought, well, that's just freaking ridiculous. Why would anybody want to know <laughs> anything in there? Uh, and surely to God, somebody can do this a lot simpler and more straightforward in a more straightforward manner. But the thing about it is that there's a tremendous amount of information in here, and it's actually organized very well. But you have to you have to know how it's structured. So it's it's so I thought I'd uh, you know break it down here in the presentation. But before that, I just want to go through the um, process of just just do a little description of what it is. So METARS. Uh, the surface weather observations for aviators. Uh, it's across Canada. I'm sure there's a comparable one in the US. I don't know what it is. And around the world, every country's got uh, a system for monitoring weather um, in, uh, in their environment, flying environment. Um, it's a surface weather observation, and it's generally issued on the hour. Uh, data is generally collected uh, by human observers or automated stations. In the case of YKF, it's uh, automated by a weather station at the airport. Um, you don't need to know anything about the systems themselves. Uh, there is a special uh, weather observation that's issued off the hour. So um, it's uh, if you see the the word or the acronym SPECI at the beginning, you've known that there's something uh, unusual about it, and uh, and it's generally not part of the regular uh, meta meta our schedule. And um, there are a few interesting pieces of information some of which are uh, important, some of which are just interesting to know, and some of them are very useful for, for planning flights. Um, METARs are part of a larger system of uh, weather notifications so that are generated by NAVCAN, and um, they include um, uh, these large area forecasts. You know, the, these are not, I mean, not that particularly 
valuable for pilots except for flight planning in advance. Um, I mean, our, our pilots, I mean, hang gliding pilots, because you're very much in the moment in, the, in a hang glider, but um, short-term uh, weather forecasts uh, of hazard, particularly hazardous conditions, which uh, can be extremely useful. Pilot reports of weather and flying conditions. So pilots flying in and out of the Southern Ontario uh, area will be reporting on weather and, um, and uh, updating uh, conditions aloft. And then the Met, the METAR and uh, the, the terminal area forecast um, is, um, is also important. I didn't do a presentation on that, but it's something that's very well, uh, you know, worthwhile being familiar with. And I might do another presentation on that um, uh, coming up in another session. And then there's an upper winds forecast uh, for pilots, particularly in commercial airlines, uh, commercial aviation. So um, I thought we'd just break down the METAR here to illustrate the structure of the, uh, of the report. So first of all, um, uh, given, what you, what, given what I've just said, I'm wondering if somebody who doesn't, so this is gonna rule out uh, Nick and Mark and anybody else who's got an aviation background here, but can somebody give a, um, tell me roughly how many reports we've got here on this page? I would Yo. say four. Yep, one, two, three, four. You're absolutely right. We've got four, and this is the way they're lined up. So um, the first one, so the, the top line of this uh, report indicates where we are. We're in Kitchener-Waterloo, Ontario. Um, the second line starts with the word METAR, or the, the acronym, and uh, the uh, then you see uh, SPECI and then another METAR and then another METAR. So you've got three METAR reports here and a special report. And um, so that right away can, can make it a little bit easier for you to digest. You actually don't have to digest the entire code at one time. You can take a look at um, the, the specific for, or, uh, reports for the times that you're interested in. Uh, so these are the these are the two uh, words uh, METAR and speci speci when you uh, when you're uh, in looking for which um, uh, which lines to check out as part of the code. And I would say that uh, you should also it's worthwhile just checking this out. They have a webcam on the top of the tower at uh, the airport. And it's uh, it's a 24/7 webcam um, showing weather conditions at the airport. Uh, if you click that link, it'll take you straight there, and uh, it's pretty cool. It gives you immediate visual of the conditions that they're talking about um, at the airport. What link is that to to get to the webcam? So it, it's it's right on the top of all of the METAR reports. So if you uh, just uh, go right, through, so the title of the report is uh, Kitchener Waterloo Ontario. Um, for another airport, it might be Billy Bishop uh, uh, or Toronto Island or uh, Toronto Pearson or Buttonville or whatever. And then uh, there'll be a little webcam um, notice on the on the right hand side of the first line. So. First thing that's worthwhile uh, knowing about here is the location. So CYKF is the um, na uh, the NAVCAN um, uh, label for uh, Kitchener Waterloo um, or Waterloo Region International Airport. Um, it, it you know we just drop the C when we're talking about it. Generally, we call it YKF. Um, and uh, all of the airports in Canada will have a comparable uh, uh, label. So uh, YHM is Hamilton um, International, YYZ is Toronto, uh, YKZ is, is Buttonville, uh, YPQ is Peterborough, and YXU is uh, London. Um, find the airport. I know we've got a few pilots here from Peterborough and London area. 
So uh, those those airport labels will be on on the METARs that you want to look for uh, when you're checking this out. So it, the 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 key thing, what, another key thing about the METAR is that it's very specific about the date and time, and the date and time is always identified right after the airport label. So it's located uh, as a third. Uh, the third item in the row of uh, of symbols or of uh, codes, and in this particular case, the um, the this particular uh, uh, um, time signature what that's identified in circle here is uh, identifies that we're on the twenty seventh day of the month, and the time is two thousand Zulu which is um, uh, international time signature here. So I might, I might get uh, somebody to uh, help me out here and give me, oh yeah, here, I wanna also identify that, that you'll notice on the speci, the line that's identified as speci, um, the times, the, 20, the 27th of uh, April, but it's at 1936 Zulu. So it's off the hour and, that the reason for that it's undetermined at this point, but obviously there was something unusual about um, the weather at that particular moment, and they felt the need to report, uh, make a special report. So, can somebody give me a definition of Zulu time? Isn't that Greenwich Mean Time? Greenwich Mean Time, absolutely. Has anybody got a? Uh, can give me a quick calculation of Greenwich Mean Time? relative to so where the hell is Greenwich? It's in England and it is four hours ahead of us. England so and here, four hours. yeah, so it's 8, p, it's 8 p.m. here, it's midnight oh. there. All right. And another thing is that it runs on a 24 hour clock, right? So it's um, generally speaking, uh, the, all of the all of the time signatures on a METAR report are going to be run in 24 hours. So the question is, if uh, what Nick has said is true, then we have to do a little bit of math in order to figure out what the time is here. And um, I've just broken out a little bit here, and somebody might correct me if I'm wrong, but um, if it's four hours ahead of time, uh, ahead of where we are, it's Eastern time plus four hours plus 12 hours to get the Zulu uh, time at this uh, particular moment. Um, so in our particular case, it would be, um, uh, it's 8 p.m. plus four hours, means it's uh, 12, uh, 12, 11, which means that it's 11, uh, 0, 0, 11 in uh, Greenwich right now, or you can work the other way. Uh, it's Zulu, um, if you read this particular, forecast it's uh, 2000 Zulu and uh, you take 2000 minus four hours which is 1600 minus 12 means that um, that particular forecast was taken place at which time 2000 Zulu come on you guys I was going to hum the jeopardy th uh, theme <laughs> Somebody do the math for me. What I'm not sure. Is... I'm not sure how you're working it out, but I get four o'clock in the afternoon. Four o'clock in the afternoon. Bravo, bravo. Yeah. Thank you very much for that, Terry. Uh, Rod, can I throw uh, something in here? Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Um, on the very bottom of your slide, it says Eastern Standard Time. That actually should be Eastern Daylight Time. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. Oh, yes, that's right. Right, because we are in uh, daylight savings time, right? Right. In 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 Zulu time does not move. So in the winter, we are on we are on standard time, and it's a five hour difference. Right. That's a great point. Yeah. But since we fly hang gliders and only in the summer, then we can only you only really need to think about the four hours. Yes, unless you're one of those mm -hmm. crazy people that flies at uh, the, at the dunes. Okay. So there you. There you go. Did I make that calculation wrong? Oh yeah, so two o'clock is 1800 Zulu. Yeah, 
and 2000 Zulu is four, four o'clock, yep. And um, the other thing that's worthwhile noting here in this, in this slide is that the word auto, you'll see the word auto as, fourth, as the fourth um, uh, code. And, and that simply says that uh, the forecast or the observation is taken automatically by the weather station at YKF. So if it was manual, you'd see a different uh, signature there. But, but uh, by and large, all the major airports have auto, um, automatic uh, weather observations. So the next code is wind direction and velocity. And uh, the important piece of information here is that uh, wind direction is uh, taken on the, the compass and we have 360 degrees on a compass. So um, I thought it would be interesting to get the, uh, the wind direction and speed from, an, from, a, uh, from one of you y'all down there. Um, what do we have here in the fourth category or fifth category rather? Can anybody give me the speed and wind direction? West southwest four knots. It's four knots uh, in the south from the southwest. That's two. If you go to the compass dial, you'll see that 260 degrees is 10 degrees south of um, due west, and so the the uh, wind direction is uh, from the west at four knots, just uh, as Mark had said. And um, it's useful to know how much a knot is. How fast is a knot, Mark? A knot is um, slightly less than miles per hour. It's it, just it, slightly it, more than miles an hour. Pardon me? Just slightly more. Yeah, slightly more. Yeah, I think it's uh, 1.8, um, 1.8 or 1.82 um, uh, kilometers or 1.2 miles an hour. Okay, I yeah, actually, I was thinking um, if you double it, you're getting kilometers per hour. Yeah, pretty close, just about, not quite. So about 20 kilometers an hour, which should be about 12 miles per hour. Yeah, so, it's, it's uh, sorry. Yep. I was going to say that it's 1.85 from knots to kilometers, and 1.1 okay. 1 .1, and 1.15 from knots to miles. Right. So, uh, so four knots. This is a, obviously a very light wind uh, condition. Um, <clears throat> it's about uh, what would what would we say about um, eight kilometers an hour, or not quite seven kilometers an hour, something like that. Um, and and here you've got uh, down below you've got a um, a wind at uh, ten knots or eleven knots rather, so two forty the wind shifted um, at uh, nineteen thirty six so twenty four minutes earlier the wind is uh, from the um, two forty which is slightly further souther southerly and it's a little bit stronger. So a bit of a gust moving through when that when that observation was taken. Take a look at this uh, forecast at 1900 Zulu, so three o'clock in the afternoon. Actually registered zero wind, completely no wind whatsoever at YKF. And then um, another observation here so before i before i ha uh, let me be, let me back, just back up so um next to these next to not next to the wind uh, uh uh so in the sixth sixth code beside uh the 240 at 11 knots you'll see um uh 210 V uh, 280. 
And that indicates that the wind is shifting there between 210 and 280. So that's a pretty significant range. It's uh, running almost 90 degrees in turn. So it's 80, 80, 70 degrees in terms of the swings in the wind at 11 knots. So um, there's a significant amount of uh, variability here in terms of the wind velocity in, in the wind direction. And um, here that at, at, at 1800, that's two o'clock in the afternoon, that's even more significant. It's running from 260 to 360, 100 degrees of um, swing in the wind uh, variability at, uh, at um, two o'clock in the afternoon. Um, so visibility, th this, is, uh, this is a useful and, and visibility cloud base and cover. So the, the, the weather observations, very, very systematic about this. Nine statute miles is essentially 100% visibility. It's, it's perfectly clear uh, day. It's as, nine statute miles is basically as far as you can see uh, on the horizon standing on level ground. And so that means essentially uh, you've got uh, perfect um, perfect visibility. And at uh, 2000 Zulu or four o'clock, it was uh, clear. So that meant that there was there, there essentially no clouds over YKF at that particular point in time. Um, at uh, the Speci, so this is uh, this is only 24 minutes earlier. That's at 9, 1936 Zulu. There were few clouds, and they were based at 8,500 feet. So the 085 is the no number of feet above the airport. And um, I'm pretty sure, but I'm going to just ask uh, Nick to correct me if I'm wrong here. But uh, that's actually AGL, right? Yeah, all all airport related. Um, Airport related parameters are in magnetic compass and um, AGL. Yep, yep. So, um, so here you have few at at uh, at 8500, and then uh, if you look a little bit uh, earlier, so this is the 1800 Zulu uh, observation. It's classified as broken at uh, 080, which is 8000 feet. Um, so. There's a, there's a variety of, of classifications. Clear means clear, few means a few. Uh, I think there's a, there are percentages allocated to these uh, in some in the manuals, but um, uh, you know they're pretty self-explanatory for, uh, for us. The la uh, an another category here is um, temperature and dew point. And this is really valuable for soaring, uh, understanding the soaring conditions. Um, so in the first METAR report um, on this particular table, it's uh, right at find, you can find it right after the clear, uh, the, the notification of clear conditions. Um, this report identifies that it's uh, 13 degrees at the surface and it's, and the dew point is, um, is, is minus five. So this is this, that's a valuable, M there, if you see it's uh, below zero degrees Celsius. Um, can anybody tell me why dew point is of interest for hang glider pilots? Y'all. Cloud base. Anybody? It's cloud base. Cloud base is uh, where the, um, the temperature of the atmosphere is too cold to contain the amount of moisture in the uh, in the rising uh, thermal, and um, the air the moisture condenses out of the thermal at that point and forms a cloud. So your your dew point uh, is tells you what the temperature is at cloud base at any given point in time. So if you're lucky enough to get the cloud base, you're going to be unlucky enough to discover that it's going to be minus five degrees Celsius. Hmm. 
So the last category here that I want to talk about is atmospheric pressure and um, and the altimeter setting. And I got to tell you, Fred, I'm just make this say this right up front. I've never understood altimeter setting, so I'm not going to pretend here. But I know there's a few people in the room that can actually help us with that concept. Altimeter setting um, is uh, the first uh, category here. And the interesting thing, we have our altimeters on our um, on our on our flight instruments are um, they don't they don't actually contain any mercury, but this measurement is the uh, setting of uh, mercury that you need to put your uh, altimeter to when you're uh, about to fly, um, uh, uh, taking off at the airport, so that you've got an accurate reading of your uh, al altitude throughout. Um, at least the first portion of your flight. Um, Nick, how, how far off was I on that one? For the old time oh. aviators. Yeah, without without really getting into it, into the details, yeah, that was correct. Okay, so. Any more um, will make your head melt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and as a result, we're all very grateful that we don't have mercury in our al altimeters anymore. Apart from that, it's really bad for the environment and your mental health um uh, the interesting me, isn't it more isn't it more important when you're approaching the airport oh yeah no it's a really good point um so you will get a you'll you'll get this if you're flying into ykf for example you'll get the metar you'll find out you'll all this information and then you'll be able to use your this uh, alt, alt, um, altitude setting to uh, make sure that your um, your instruments are uh, adequate are are accurate going into into land. Yeah, no, that's a really good point, Terry. Hmm. Okay. Sorry um, for for interjecting. It's it's also actually critical en route yeah. because um, everybody has to in the same general area has to have their altimeters set about the same, so that if their altimeters tell them they have 500 feet of separation, that they actually do have 500 feet of separation. Right. So if you're uh, if you're a commercial uh, uh, pilot uh, from here to Calgary, uh, somewhere along the way, let's say uh, close to Thunder Bay, you would uh, you would uh, pick up the uh, METAR uh, from Thunder Bay and check the altimeter setting and calibrate your instruments if it wasn't done automatically. Is that correct? If you were flying lower and VFR, yes, you would. The airlines have a different rule, which doesn't matter. Okay, are, right on. Excuse me, are we talking ASL or AGL? Everything in aviation is MSL. Yeah. Uh, except what you said when you're approaching the airport, then they... No, except for except yeah. for the, the clouds at the airport in the METAR is AGL. Uh-huh. Yeah. But so everything... But everything else is MSL. They do that just to make it very straightforward for all of us, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're talking about AGL if we're looking at the clouds, and we're talking about MSL if we're looking at um, uh, altitude settings in our instruments. Um, I think the important thing, one of the things to, to note here is that these numbers changed over the course of between 1800 Zulu and 2000 Zulu. So between two o'clock in the afternoon and four o'clock in the afternoon, uh, the altimeter changed by going down. So by from 3009 to 3007. And um, Nick, I'm wondering if you can give me an interpretation of that. Well, it means that either a high pressure area is leaving the area or a low pressure is approaching. Right. The, so the a, atmospheric pressure is dropping. Right. So let's take a look at what that means. Oh, um, there, there is another, there's a little acronym here that, uh, that refers to marks. So honestly, I actually know how useful this uh, is. It doesn't actually say anything except that there is going to be another, uh, 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 there's going to be another code to follow. Um, there could be a variety of codes depending on what the weather conditions are. But in this particular case, 
it's going to the next code refers to sea level pressure and um the interesting thing here for me is that um the sea level pressure actually did drop from 198 um in uh, at two o'clock uh, in the afternoon to 190 in uh, at at four o'clock in the afternoon so um that would that would confirm what nick was saying that the um that in fact the uh, the pressure in the atmosphere was actually declining and uh, the high pressure was starting to move out um, um i was just going to uh, what's that i was just going to interject and say uh the wind backing as well another indication of that i believe yeah yep yeah absolutely and just to yeah, really simplify it. things for, for hang glider pilots, this remark and the sea level pressure is useful. Basically, the altimeter setting is in imperial inches of mercury, and the sea level pressure is in, in hectopascals. It, so it's the metric. It's the metric. So if you have a, a fly tech, um, it probably will let you set your altimeter in either. But if you get a European um, vario, and you want to manually set your altimeter, you would do it using the um, hectopascal number. Right on. Yes. But we just let the we just let it do it automatically with GPS and then forget about it. Forget about it, yeah. Uh, it's a good point, uh, Terry, though, because um, Terry makes the point that, that your wind conditions actually might indicate that uh, the pressure is also starting to drop. I'm not sure if that's the case here, um uh we have let's go back to wind conditions uh can somebody uh give me the wind direction and speed at um at two o'clock in the afternoon or 1800 zulu just for the record that wasn't me i think that was the other terry wasn't it oh it was yeah uh, oh, it looks like it looks like it's westerly yeah, so interestingly, uh, at, at two o'clock in the afternoon, um, we're seeing 320 degrees at 10 knots. Um, I wish I had a, well, maybe my pointer will work. No, oh, I can't take it over there. Um, Rod, in the, in the tools there, there is a, a laser pointer. Um, is it? So kind of at the, you see where you, you you can mute unmute yourself turn your webcam on there should be a tool that you can draw on the screen okay, watch oh, yeah. the eyes with that thing though <laughs> okay let me just see if i can get it over onto that side i can't get my cursor over there for some damn reason so oh well <laughs> um so yeah at, at 1800 the wind was three at 320 uh um coming at 10 knots uh, by by uh, 2000 at four o'clock in the afternoon, it was 260. So it had shifted and lightened up um, uh, uh, to four knots, 260 at four knots. However, both of those cases, you're looking at still quite significant variability. So I'm not sure if there's a clear indication here uh, about what the weather is doing from the wind direction. It's still pretty variable and it's gusting uh, uh, significantly shifting directions from the west predominantly. So, um, hang on now. Ah, my free screen is frozen now. <laughs> um oh there we go okay so here we are um this is that photograph from my office and guys now that you know what the medar report is can you tell me how freaking awesome that day was it looks great from your office that's for sure what's that yeah it's uh it's it, so going back um at two o'clock in the afternoon, uh, it's uh, the winds are running three three twenty uh, at ten knots. 
um, or 15, 16 miles an, uh, uh, kilometers an hour, uh, but they're highly variable. That means they're gusty from uh, 260 to 360. So they're gust, they're, they're very, you know, shifting 100 degrees on the ground. The cloud base, that cloud base that we're looking at is 8,000 feet right there above the ground level. Wow, so, it looks so much lower. Isn't that amazing? So as long as you're dressed for it, it was amazing. But you're right. It's like bloody four degrees below zero at uh, at eight thousand feet. So plus uh, a anyway. plus a fifty k wind chill. Well, plus a fifty k wind chill. Yeah. So anyway, that's the uh, that's my presentation. Here are the guides. So um, I can uh, you know the the presentation we can make available here on the on the uh, Soga site. Um, if you want um, the, a really great the first bullet there is the Metar guide. It's a really great, uh, very simple uh, two or three page uh, description of the codes, how to read them. And um, the website is um, is uh, the NAVCAM web website there, flightplanning.navcan.ca. Um, but uh, you can just Google a Metar at your airport, wherever you happen to be flying, whether you're around London or around uh, uh, Toronto Pearson. Um, it's, uh, it's very easy to get. So anyway, that's my presentation for the evening. Well, very nice. Thank you, Rod. Yep. Thank you, Rod. Well done, Rod. Yeah. Hey, Rod, that good. was great. A lot, a lot of good info there, Rod. And, uh, it's good that this is being recorded. So that, that was, if you didn't absorb it all like me, you can always go back and, and, uh, review it. Uh, yeah. Now, where where is this going to be posted now? Well, it's a good point. I should uh, I can put it on the um, on the Soga um, the Soga page, um, and uh, you know we we do have to get ourselves organized on on filing these presentations and other like meetings and so on and so forth. So um, I, I'm open to suggestions as to where do we put it. Uh, my question was Good. more to uh, Mark uh, for go to meeting. It's being recorded, so we should post this on Facebook somewhere, I guess. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, what, what happens is like tomorrow morning, I get an email saying that the recording is ready. So, um, so I, I often um, I often post that in a. Um, usually in in the event, um, the sense. Facebook event. <laughs> yeah, usually in the Facebook event, um, it, as a comment, I'll, I'll post that. Here's the link to the the meeting we had last night. I might um, I might try to um, take that and and um, do some video editing and and take out just Rod's um, presentation, just so it's a standalone one. Okay, great. Thanks, Mark, for. Thanks. Uh, looking out for all this. Yeah, no Ken. problem. So just, just as Rod was talking there, um, I, I simply did a Google search on uh, Metar um, YKF, and and this is is what came up. So, and this is this is current as of as of today. Um, and here's that link that he was mentioning the show show the weather cam, um, and and this is what came up. Hey, so these, these are current current pictures. Awesome. Hey, Mark, if you go back to the Metar page, if you look down at the very bottom, it shows you local time and Zulu time. Oh, yeah. Well, that's so, you don't have to, so you don't have to think about it. <laughs> yeah. And I got, I got one little piece of trivia related to this. The reason it looks so cryptic is because up until, I don't know, 40, 50 years ago, all of these were transmitted by Morse code. Oh, right, right. So you're you're in the middle of a Pacific in the back seat of a Hellcat, <laughs> listening to your radio, copying this crap down so you know how to navigate back to your ship. <laughs> that all makes sense now. Yeah. Um, also, while Rod was talking, I uh, just Googled uh, Metar Legend. And there was a link that brought this up that um, can help decipher all those uh, 
all the code and what you might what you might find uh, mixed yep. in there. And in one of those pages, it, it, it actually breaks down each line and each uh, category in each line um, as to what the options are. So it's, uh, yeah, there's some good, there's some, there's some good uh, resources available. They're not that complicated to, uh, to look up. It's a fun evening of uh, research to figure it all out. 